wonderful composition into thine hands I commit my spirit which is what our life is all about we're saying in substance we're taking our own hands off of our own life not manipulating and putting it into the heart mind and hands of the spirit anthropomorphizing it just a bit saying I am yours God I'm yours love I'm yours beauty I am yours intelligence I am yours divine order life use me to reveal all that life is activating the potential that is within me within we that we may bring to the earth an ever expanding good as I said earlier leaving a vibrational footprint of beauty and love and bliss not seeking to go out and get a bunch of stuff but to go out and let the power and the presence and the love of God reveal itself on earth as it is in the highest heaven which is the realm of ever expanding good infinite potential our theme of the month has been and continues to be, to see, to be, to live in serenity. And then our topic, I have to say it while I remember it, something along the lines of a time for eternity or something to that effect. Let me just take a look because I, I'm, I just kind of in the flow vibe. What is the topic for today? Yeah, time for the eternal, a living paradox. So as we've been talking about a little bit uh, this month, uh, 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 to, to see, to be, to live in serenity, we've come to an awareness uh, that we're not seeking to make the world serene. We are, we are seeking to be in a state of awareness of, of serenity that can only happen when we're living life from a larger context of life. You've heard me say over the years uh, that humanity has a tendency to shrink their context and to say in substance unconsciously to live, move, and have their beingness in the world, to live, move, and have their beingness in their ge geographical birthplace, to live, move, and have their being in the context that they are the sons and daughters of merely their parents or ancestral line, to live, move, and have their being in the college they went to, the high school they went to, the place where they grew up. That is a limited paradigm. In that paradigm, there is suffering. Within that paradigm, there is lack and limitation. Within that paradigm, there is scarcity and not enoughness. We open up our perceptual windows through affirmative prayer and the art of sacred meditation, coming to an awareness that we are living and moving and having our beingness in God, not the guy in the sky, but a presence of love and beauty, inspired wisdom and intelligence. We expand our content text in an expansion of our context uh, there is serenity there is calm and there is a dynamic uh, peace with expanded context the content of our mind uh, is inspiration shot from the heart mind of the infinite not the mental pollution emanating from the sea of mental garbage through the context of humanity's ignorance of their oneness with God. That was a long sentence, but it all made sense. And then, of course, our peace, as I describe it, is the dynamic of harmonizing good, which comes when we are in alignment with the presence that is never an absence. And so to see is to open our perception that we may see divinity is everywhere, that we may be that vibration, that we may live in serenity. I am not saying by any means that this is an easy thing to do. I'm saying, of course, that through spiritual practice, which is why you enter into this spiritual community so you can be encouraged to have a spiritual practice, you begin to dissolve the sense of separation between you and the presence and you're really able to walk in the world as a serene being. This is not mean inert. This is not being not passionate. This is not being not active. It means that what is flowing through you is an awareness 
of the presence. It's an awareness that everything is working together for good. You may not like everything, but everything is working together for good because we're living in a progressive universe, a friendly universe, a progressive universe that allows everything that is, appears to be going on to be working together for the good based on your expanded awareness through your spiritual practice to see, to be, to live in serenity for such a time as this in human history where the whole world has taken a nightmare pill and has succumbed to fear, doubt, and worry as normality, not you, not here, not now. You are entering into the dynamic of liberation, freeing yourself from such limited point of view, not giving yourself any excuses by looking for reasons why you are suffering. You look for reasons, you'll find excuses. You are saying in substance, I can place my attention in, in such a one-pointed way that I can find one reason to be in peace, one reason to be grateful, one reason to be serene. I can just need one. And the focus of my attention will draw to me inspired wisdom, transformation, knowledge, creative intelligence, unconditional love that will open up the portals of my soul and allow for the infinite that is everywhere to reveal itself as a good that is presently beyond my wildest imagining. And when I say my, I'm talking about all of us. Therefore, I just need to go back to the topic again because I keep forgetting it. Time for the eternal. A living paradox. I have to write it down. I, I like this. Time for the eternal, a living paradox. Why is that a, a paradox or is, a, is a seeming contradiction in which the contradiction may be true nevertheless. When we deal with a time, we're coming to an understanding, of course, that time is relative. That time is the measurement of a distance between objects. And it's also the measurement of a duration of an experience based on thought forms. So, so time is relative. It doesn't really exist because there is no real distance on the spiritual level between objects and between people. And it is the duration of an experience of a thought form or a belief or a perception. And once that thought has been uh, uh, transmuted, once that particular perception has expanded, and then time stops, you see? So time for the eternal. Paradoxical, because the eternal is not a long time. <laughs> Sometimes naively people think, well, the eternal, that's a long time. No, the eternal has nothing to do with time at all. It is what it is. Love is, peace is, joy is, wisdom is, life is. Two plus two is four is. There's, n there's never a moment in which one day, two plus two, here it comes, two plus two is about to be five. No. It is what it is. So when we understand time for the eternal, we begin to understand that what time is is a canvas by which we get to paint, as I've said, with the colors of our soul. The question is, you know, what are you doing with your canvas? Are you caught up in the canvas? Are you caught up in the relative time duration of thoughts and perceptions and beliefs? Are you caught up? in seeming separation. What are you doing with your canvas? Are you painting with the colors of your soul? Or are you caught up in the canvas of time? You know, we were having a board meeting the other day and, uh, and Reverend uh, uh, Susie brought forth uh, the Christian D. Larson passage of, and, 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 and of time in which, in which uh, I, I, I'm paraphrasing Christian D. Larson and saying in substance uh, that if in fact you are working on your own unfoldment. You have no time to criticize others. I want you to think about that. That if, in fact, you are using this canvas called time to perfect your loving, if you're using this canvas of time on your own self-unfoldment, you have no time to criticize anyone else because the time canvas is being used for your own unfoldment. Secondly, you don't have to paint with complaint. 
If, in fact, you're working on yourself on a regular basis, there is no time for complaining. You're not using time. You're not using the canvas to paint with complaint, to paint with criticism. You are using it to infuse your canvas with divine love, infusing your canvas with creativity, infusing your canvas with generosity, infusing your canvas with bliss and beauty so that you're transcending the limited points of view. There are individuals, of course, that are preoccupied. Their mind is preoccupied with unresolved issues, repressed and suppressed thoughts so that are acting as law in their life. So their mind is preoccupied and they can't help themselves but to be hypercritical of others. They can't help themselves to look for something that's negative in another because the mind is preoccupied. Now when we come to an understanding uh, that we have to remember in order to forget, ooh, what a great paradox. We have to, what does that mean? Well, in the Zen technology, a Zen master would say, the past must die. The past is must die, it can't influence your future. In the Western philosophy, someone may say, well, if you don't remember your past, then you're doomed to repeat it. So in Zen, they say, hey, forget about it, it's dead. Western philosophy says, if you don't remember it, you're doomed to repeat it. So there has to be a reconciliation between killing the past and remembering it. And so we look into the mystical teachings of Ecclesiastes 3.15 where it says that which is has already been and that which is to be is happening now. God requires the past. Now, now, now what does that mean? There's something called the dynamic of spiritual liberation. That when you begin to sincerely pray, and I'm not talking about praying for stuff in the world. I'm not talking about praying for what your personality wants in order for you to think, for, for you to think that this is, if you only had A, B, C, and D, you'd be happy. No, I'm talking about real prayer. I'm talking about the prayer of connection, as this, the choir was singing, use, you know, into thine hands I commit my spirit. As we were praying to have a spiritual realization of our oneness with God, as we're going into the art and the science of meditation, something begins to happen and the dynamic of spiritual liberation begins to take place, meaning that which has been repressed or suppressed, repression happens unconsciously, suppression happens consciously when we just can't handle the stuff that has happened in our life. It begins to surface in our awareness. As it begins to surface, now we are remembering what we're going to need to forget. It comes into our awareness, and with a little bit of examination, we see that what, that, that what we have suppressed or repressed and the experience thereof is a lie that never happened. In other words, there has never been scarcity. There has never been lack. I'm speaking on the spiritual level now. There's never been lack. Never been, there's never been limitation. There's never been not enoughness. There's never been hurt, harmed, or endangered on a spiritual level. And so when you remember what you are suppressing or repressing and examine it, you see underneath that particular thought, there is a lie that is bringing about experience. This is paradoxical because you can experience something that isn't true. You can experience something that isn't real. You can experience something that never happened. And so in the moment of the dynamic of spiritual liberation, you are remembering something in order to forget it. You examine it. It didn't happen. And that experience, that experience happened, but it never happened on the cosmic level. Therefore, you become absolutely liberated by remembering to forget. Are you picking up what I'm putting down here? In other words, we've reconciled. The past must die. We've reconciled. Uh, if, if you don't remember it, you're doomed to repeat it because you're coming to an understanding on a mystical level. And this is where we're going. Please understand that every path spiritually is not just about having the things that you need or the things that you want in the world. Every spiritual path has its basis in mysticism, which allows you to come to an awareness that there's something about you that's unheardable. 
There's something about you that is immortal, and for you to develop the courage to walk in your immortality now, not to wait, to walk in the awareness now so that what? So that you can infuse the canvas of time with the love and the beauty and the bliss and the ecstasy and the joy and the generosity and the creativity. How are you using the canvas? Are you, you, are you cri- hypercritical? Are you complaining? Are you looking for excuses to be right? If so, your mind is preoccupied, hijacked by thought forms that have been producing experiences separating you, or, or by experience only, because you can never be separated from the presence of God, separating you from your great dignity. In other words, you don't want to be an undignified being walking around the planet criticizing and constantly critiquing and constantly complaining how undignified that is of a cosmic being that has everything eternal, immortal right now. And so you you hear That which is has already been. That which is is to be is happening now. God requires the past. So we're setting in motion everything we've unresolved. That which is now has already been. It's a part of what we've not resolved. And that which is to be is happening now. So it's a, and most people are living in Groundhog Day. You remember that movie? Caught in a loop. But you have come to enter into the dynamic of spiritual liberation. And the reason why it's, we call it dynamic, because it doesn't necessarily feel good. It's a dynamic of, of chemicalization. It's a dynamic of things coming into our awareness where you're ultimately able to see, mm, that's not me. Mm, that was an experience based on a lie. Mm, that's not me. And then let freedom ring. The mind is no longer preoccupied with the past and the coping and the defensive mechanisms and the compulsive behaviors and the self-medication and all the ways that we prevent ourselves uh, from feeling those particular thoughts that are producing experiences. No, we stand fully as a spiritual practitioner, saying my mind has been preoccupied with so much that I used to believe was true. And as it's teased into my awareness, I see it was only true on an experiential level based on the thought form in time, the duration of an experience based on a thought form, a belief, a perception. For And I was blinded by it, but now I see I've always been free. But now I see my need is met before I ask. Now I see the presence is for me and not against me. Now I see all of life is rushing to this place called me to reveal itself. My mind is not preoccupied with fear, doubt, worry. My mind as an avenue of truth is no longer hijacked. I've taken it back. It may have been programmed for protection and critique and being right. It is now an avenue of truth. And I see as I am seen. To see, to be, to live in serenity is my destiny. Oh, take a breath with me right here, just... Another breath, release, another breath, release. 
And then what gets cultivated is a level of courage. Why courage? Because we have created a kind of a, a fortress to protect ourselves. And the fortress is all the ways that, that we have acclimated ourselves to past experiences in order to survive. And it takes a lot of courage to come into a rebirth of the spirit within you, to have a renewal. It, it takes a lot of courage to realize you're going to have to give up all that is not you, for real, and step into the dawn of a new day of which your personality would say, I'm so afraid of the unknown. I'm so afraid of what's trying to emerge. I'm so afraid. It takes a level of courage to say, if I give up the past, if I analyze it and see that it's all lies, who will I be? The light that lights up every individual that comes to the planet infinite potential, infinite possibilities. And you will use time as a canvas to paint with the colors of love and beauty and bliss and joy and harmony. And then you'll check yourself on a regular basis. What am I painting? Perhaps you'll hear Brother Jay-Z Jay saying, if I'm not improving, I'm trying to kill everything moving. <laughs> you'll say, if I'm not improving, I'm trying to kill everything that is stagnant within me. Any, everything that's not moving within me, everything that is stuck in the past. Because I'm using time to improve. I'm using time to unfold, I'm using my time to become a greater version of myself, and I don't have any time left for anything else. Think about that. You have no time for anything else. So you end up being a shining, bright being. The only preoccupation is the presence in which, remember, you are living and moving and having your beingness in the presence, not in the world. You're in it, but you're off this. You have to have courage because you will not be a normal human being after that. I remember many, many years ago, it, it, memories were coming up. I remember many years ago when... It was a solitary walk after I had woken up to the spiritual awareness. And I lost pretty much all my friends because they, had thought, I, they thought I was weird. And it freaked out on Jesus. <laughs> That's what they were saying about me, you see. But I didn't look back. I, I remember going around to a lot of my friends and telling them what had happened and how the spiritual reality was real because they knew me as an agnostic atheist kind of guy, just a revolutionary activist. And still had that activism vibe within me. But. And I went to the last house to get rid of my last friend, not to get rid of it, but just to give them an opportunity to say, boy, you crazy. And it was Debbie and Reggie. Debbie answered the door, and his, his name wasn't Nirvana yet. His name was Reggie. Was walking down the hallway, and Debbie was in the living room, and I began to tell her what had, what had happened, and it was a spiritual reality that was real, and she's nodding at me, and Reggie's walking down the hall, and Reggie says, I believe you, I've been thinking along those lines myself. And thus we began an adventure of going deeper into the discovery of that which is real and that which was, is eternal. Somewhere within, you may have, have a little courage to not be normal in a world that is fitful and fearful and hypercritical and hateful and 
creating separation. You might be a little odd to carry the frequency of serenity, compassion, kindness, love, generosity, innovativeness, creativity in a time in which the world is trying to get people to succumb to fear and worry and separation and hate and separation becoming preoccupied with looking for everything that's wrong. Don't do it. Use your canvas, use your time for self-unfoldment so you have no time to criticize anybody else's walk because you're working on yourself, freeing yourself up in the dynamic of spiritual liberation, remembering what to forget, realizing it never happened on a spiritual level. It's called freedom. The body will respond. The mental body will respond. The emotional body will respond. The physical body will respond. You thing is a real thing. Rebirth is a real thing. Being reborn in the spirit is a real thing. It's consciousness. 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 Your consciousness infused by the light of the Holy, Holy Spirit, W-H-O-L-L-Y, Holy, Holy Spirit. Give yourself permission to feel that all is well. Don't let your lying eyes fool you. Seeing the condensation of previously held thought forms. Give yourself permission to feel that life is for you right now. Give yourself permission to feel that there's something to celebrate. Give yourself permission to feel that there's a joy within you. It has nothing to do with the world. Feel it. Give yourself permission to feel that dynamic power that wants to move through you. Give yourself permission. Only you can do this. No one can do it for you. You have to give yourself permission. And when you do, you'll sing, you'll dance, you'll give, you'll share, you'll shine. You'll be an avenue of compassion and kindness for such a time as this, even when it is hard. Give yourself permission to dance. Watch this. City, New Mexico is dancing with the rev, dancing with the gothic. As we lift it up, it's a Andrea Warner, that's uh, Jennifer O'Neill's sister. Family, dancing with the Rev. Now I want you to 
stand up where you are and just kind of begin to shake your groove thing. Just begin to, to move and groove with the spirit of the living God. Here we go. Little reggae beat. Take the holy breath right here, release, and come with me into this prayerful moment. You know by now that we're not begging, we're not beseeching some reluctant deity, for the presence is closer than this breath, it's nearer than our heartbeat. It's our very life. So we're seeking to have a moment of communion in prayer, to have a realization of what's already so, that it becomes the activity of our awareness, and then we know that we know that we know that we know not intellectually, but from the heart. Oh, let's turn within in this moment all around the globe. Let's just stop. And let's extract, 
isolate our attention from the world. Let's bring our attention away from the world of appearances for a moment. I know they can be gross and they can be hard and they can be trying on our nerves. Well, let's, let's for a moment take your attention away from the world of effects. And turn within in this moment. And with your inner power and spiritual fortitude, come into the spirit of gratitude. Come into the spirit of gratefulness. And you hear that gratefulness. Gratefulness. That when you come into the spirit of gratefulness, you're coming into the spirit of abundance. You're full of love, full of joy. And then through spiritual law that's matched and opportunities are everywhere. But you don't rush out in a sense of busyness to fall prey to consumerism and materialism. No, the fullness allows you to share more, to give more, to create more. To reveal the abundance that is everywhere. You walk maybe just a little slower, but manifesting so much more. Oh, my God. So in this consciousness of gratitude, we, it's easier to recognize the presence flowers and in the trees, the birds and the bees, the ground upon which we are standing is holy because we're standing there and God is everywhere. And our oneness with the Spirit becomes quite profound. Mm. Sometimes we just feel like bowing everywhere because everywhere we see is God. Oh, there's a flower, there's God. There's a tree, there's God. There's that individual right there. There's God. Oh, there's God, there's God, there's God. There's God. Mm, we are perpetually, inwardly bowing everywhere that we go. We feel this in our bones. It's my privilege to speak the word for each and every one of us that we may be free today. That the dynamic of spiritual liberation is teasing into a, our awareness all that we need to let go of. The body temple is becoming youthful because it's not carrying the, the intensity of lies, fears, and worries. The body temple is a filament of light revealing that we are the light that lights up every individual that comes to the planet. Health and vitality and vigor is reigning supreme. Mental clarity, emotional purity, body of our affairs are reflecting an order of the cosmos. All things are working together for our good. This is a feeling universe. We feel this first and foremost, and everything unfolds from this dynamic feeling tone, and we're not embarrassed about how good we feel. We're not talking uh, uh, about feeling good because of something happening in the world. We're talking about that which is emanating from the depth of our being. We're not embarrassed to be in peace. We're not embarrassed to be in joy. We're not embarrassed to be kind. We're not embarrassed to be generous. We're not embarrassed to be creative. Oh, no. We're free to be ourselves, to see, to be, to live in serenity. Oh, it's happening right now. Feel it. Woo. Help them feel it. Imagine we're in heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us
imagine Allow for your imagination to be an angel of God Imagining all the wonders of the universe until the imagination opens up and you see beyond the imaginal realm of that which is real and eternal and forever. Use your imagination wisely. Don't let it be hijacked by worst case scenarios. But only by possibilities of good. There are infinite possibilities. Choose one that's magnificent. Mm -hmm.